Well, let's now talk about your health. And today we are focusing on cervical cancer. The numbers don't look good. At least nine women die daily as a result of cervical cancer, which of course has been earmarked as the primary cause of cancer deaths among women. And there is good news. There is now a vaccine. So we just want to really understand how can we be able to access this vaccine? What do the numbers look like? And what really are we looking at going forward? And for more details of that, I am now joined by Dr. Siwili Smithe, who is a clinical oncologist. Thank you for joining us this evening. You're welcome. Let's begin with the numbers. I'm talking about nine deaths every day. Those mm -hmm. numbers already look bad. Yeah. But in terms of the prevalence rate, what are we looking at? So cervical cancer as at uh, 2018, and these are statistics from the Global Can Data Sheet. As of 2018, uh, we were recording around 5,250 new cases of cervical cancer yearly. And out of that, we're recording around 3,200 uh, 200, uh, deaths mm -hmm. from cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. And these are figures that have gone up from, say, way back in 2012, from the Global Can 2012 data sheet, where we're recording around um, 4,800 uh, new cases mm -hmm. and around uh, 2,500 deaths. So these figures definitely uh, gone up from the years. So the incidence is definitely increasing, and so is the mortality rate. So what are you attributing the increase to? So the increase could be attributed to a number of factors. Mm -hmm. One is the lack of awareness in the population. Yeah. So, and that is what we are trying to do. A lot of effort is called for. We need to do a lot of education and awareness uh, to the public. The other issue could be a lack of accessibility mm -hmm. to these uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to try and emphasize on the screening services because if you're talking about cervical cancer, you're talking about one very preventable cancer. It's yeah, a very that's preventable. That's the irony, yet it's, it's the yes. number one killer. So there's that lack of accessibility, there's the costing issues for these uh, 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 cancer screening uh, services. Yeah. There is the shortage of uh, the necessary supplies required to conduct uh, the screening mm -hmm. in, this, in the population. Uh, we're also talking about uh, perceived discomfort on the patient side. Mm -hmm. Some people uh, perceive the whole process as uh, very uncomfortable. And invasive. Yes, and then last but not least, I'll emphasize on the lack of sufficient knowledge on the disease process. This is a cancer that has a very long uh, latent period. Mm -hmm. I'm talking from the time oh. you're infected with uh, HPV mm -hmm. to the time you, you develop invasive cancer. That could take around 10, 15, 20 years. So, so what is the cause, HPV? Yes, HPV is the cause of um, cervical cancer, That's the human papilloma virus, mm -hmm. yes. All right, uh, so talk, let's talk about how does it spread in terms of the, you know, how, what causes you to get HPV? Okay, so HPV or uh, what is called in full the human papilloma, papilloma virus is a sexually transmitted uh, virus. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to just maybe briefly mention the risk factors. How do you get to contract HPV? Yes. One is uh, having multiple sexual partners. Mm -hmm. So because that increases your risk of uh, getting the HPV virus. Uh, secondly, having a partner who has multiple sexual partners is also another risk factor because again, it increases your chances of getting the, the, the virus. Uh, early onset of uh, sexual uh, debut mm -hmm. is also another risk factor because it also uh, raises your chances of uh, getting the virus. We're also talking about factors such as immunosuppression or low body immunity. immunity. Yes, mm -hmm. as occurs in conditions such as HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have HIV AIDS and you have the virus, then your chances of, of, of acquiring cervical cancer are, are high, or rather mm -hmm. your chances of getting uh, the HPV is, is, is high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are just some of the, of the reasons. And of course, other factors such as uh, uh, smoking, Exposure to tobacco is another cofactor that could also uh, predispose you to getting the HPV virus, yeah, all right. cervical cancer. Let's now talk about the good news. That, that is all <laughs> bad news. Mm -hmm. well, let's talk about the vaccine. What is happening? So basically, uh, the HPV vaccine is a vaccine that is uh, meant to protect against uh, getting the HPV virus. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, quite a number of um, uh, HPV viruses. Mm -hmm. We have like a hundred strains of HPV, mm -hmm. but only 15 are oncogenic or the high risk types. 
Okay. Yeah. And out of those 15 types, uh, type 16 and 18 are the ones that are implicated in cervical cancer. Actually, around more than 70% 70, 70 uh, of cervical cancer mm -hmm. is usually caused by HPV strains 16 and 18. And 18, okay. Yes. Uh, so, um, what the vaccine is all about, uh, like I said, it's aiming to, 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 to uh, prevent mm -hmm. that uh, uh, acquisition of the virus. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's mainly aimed to target um, girls aged 10 years. So, the vaccine is going to be, to be targeting around 800,000 girls countrywide mm -hmm. uh, aged 10 years. And this is to sensitize them. Why we are aiming at uh, that age group? is because they have not yet been exposed to the virus. So mm -hmm. just like any other vaccine, when you're giving a vaccine to a person, mm -hmm. you're trying to, to, to sensitize that person to that antigen or that foreign thing mm -hmm. in the body. Mm -hmm. So you're stimulating the, bodies, uh, the antibodies in the patient's body or the immune system, uh, which is basically the antibodies, to, 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 to be uh, aware that there's a foreign uh, substance in mm -hmm. the body. So at the time, at a later time that the patient gets exposed to the virus, then the antibodies are already formed against so that. So the body, yeah, they can, they can already fight that infection. So that is the reason why we are targeting these girls before they begin uh, sexual intercourse, before they're exposed to the virus such that they are able to, to effectively fight the, the effect of the HPV virus. So only 10 year olds can be able to access this vaccine or who else can um, I, you know, can I be able to access that vaccine and will it help me? Yeah, so um, I would say there's no age limit to the HPV vaccine. Mm -hmm. There's no age, age limit. Anyone can be vaccinated. I mean the women. And uh, the only fact that is, uh, I, can, I can actually affirm is that it is more effective in these girls that have not been exposed to the virus prior. Okay. For people that have been exposed, to the virus, then the effectiveness is, is, is reduced compared to those who have been given the vaccine prior to the exposure. So yes, every woman can be vaccinated, can get the HPV vaccine, but the effectiveness is questionable in the older age groups or in people who've already had prior exposure to the... Because of the 10-year window that you were talking about? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about younger than 10? Mm -hmm. Can you get it as early as five years or six years? Like, sort of like the routine immunization that we have. Um, no, the target age group is uh, nine, between nine to 12, 13, because mm. they've, they're, 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 they're reaching adolescent at around that time, mm. and they're just about to begin sexual intercourse. So giving it to five, four-year-olds, no. We're targeting that age right around puberty, right before they get exposure to, to the uh, virus. That essentially means the sexual debut for... for, for <laughs> yes. It's, it's roughly put at 10 years. Yes, exactly. Wow. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the safety of this particular vaccine. Mm -hmm. How safe is it? So I would say the vaccine is safe. Uh, so far, uh, there's a pilot study that was conducted in Kitui in 2015, that is four years ago, mm -hmm. uh, where the vaccine was rolled out and the uptake was good, around 95%. And very minor side effects were reported. Such as um, what? Side effects such as uh, pain at the injection site. Uh, we're talking about swelling at the in injection site that resolved. Uh, symptoms such as dizziness and some low-grade fever, which after monitoring for around 15, 30 minutes, these patients were well and they were discharged. Mm -hmm. So nothing so extreme has been reported this far, mm -hmm. and I would affirm that the vaccine is, 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 is safe. Mm -hmm. So yes. which other areas have you rolled it out? You've talked about Kitui, that was in 2015, yeah. about four years ago. Mm -hmm. Why? We are now in 2019, yeah. almost, almost five years. Mm -hmm. So Four that, years, rather. That was a pilot. Yeah, yeah that, that was a pilot. And uh, as I said, the government, uh, through the Ministry of Health and the National Cancer Control Program, is hoping to, to roll out or to launch uh, the vaccine now in the country. Actually, the launch is expected to happen this month, this October. And uh, it's going to target, like I said, around 800,000 uh, girls aged 10 years. It will be incorporated in the normal immunization schedule. Mm -hmm. And it will be given to all girls who attend, within that age group, who attend the healthcare facilities, but there will also be school outreaches as mm -hmm. well. Okay. So the schedule is that they'll be getting two doses uh, six months apart. Okay. So a pilot study had to be conducted first 
And then now we are hoping now to disseminate the whole thing uh, to the whole country. It will go into the whole country. Mm -hmm. So how, how are you going to do the routine immunization? Because at 10 years old, there is no immunization. That yes, you know, it will just be put through. in the schedule. Mm -hmm. if, if, if the KP immunization schedule says at six months, at this at uh, nine months, at one year, this is what you're supposed to get. Then at 10 years, that, the, that, the, that vaccine will be uh, introduced into the KP immunization mm -hmm. schedule as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Uh, there are always, always the fears about, you know, when, you, when you're saying that uh, you'll get this uh, particular vaccine, mm -hmm. is in there the fear that perhaps now young people will tend to begin to engage, you know, in sexual activity early because they now think they have some kind of protection because they have the vaccine? Yes, that is right. But it is also wise to look at it this way. Mm -hmm. You're not only um, being protected against cervical cancer, okay? Mm -hmm. There are other um, illnesses that you can still get through promiscuous uh, sexual activity. We have HIV and AIDS that can be acquired through that as well. We have pregnancies that could occur. So looking at it in the line that, okay, fine, I'm now vaccinated against HPV and I can now, I'm now free to engage in uh, early onset of sexual debut or promiscuous uh, sexual intercourse, that is not a wise way to look at it because you're not only preventing cervical cancer, there are other uh, illnesses that can, 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 can be acquired through promiscuous sexual activity. Secondly, the vaccine is only covering, remember I talked about the oncogenic or the high risk types. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the vaccine that will be rolled out will be covering uh, four types of, of HPV viruses. Mm -hmm. So it will be covering against uh, type 16, 18, uh, that those are the high risk types, and then six and uh, eleven, those are benign. So um, those are only two of the high risk types that are covered in that uh, uh, codivalent vaccine or the mm -hmm. Gardasil vaccine. Mm -hmm. Now we have other oncogenic types. We have 13 other um, uh, HPV virus that could still cause cervical cancer. So being vaccinated against these two doesn't mean that you cannot get cervical cancer from the other strains. Mm -hmm. The only documented evidence is that, yes, they cause 70% or more of the cervical cancers, but it doesn't mean those other strains mm -hmm. you cannot, cannot cause cervical cancer. So, yes, I don't think it is a prophylaxis per se, yeah. but it's a step towards the, the, the uh, right direction. All right. Yeah. You mentioned that you, you, you have two, two, two jabs yes. uh, twice a year. Mm -hmm. What happens if you skip one of them? No, you just go back to the schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just go back to the schedule. You skip an immunization, we just take you back to the to, to So you have to schedule. do it all over again? Yes, because the effect in, it effectiveness will not be proper if you skip. Okay. Mm. Uh, you've talked about 10-year-olds. Are there any you know, particular people who cannot access this particular uh, vaccine? So um, the vaccine, actually, I forgot to mention, the government will be providing it for free. Okay. It's been available in private facilities since 2011, by the way. At what cost? <laughs> At around 18,000 upwards for the two doses. For the two? Yes, for the two doses. Wow. 18,000 upwards, ranging mm -hmm. from, from, from that. Mm -hmm. So uh, the good news is that the government will be providing it uh, for free, so it will be accessible to, to all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for free, it is for the 10 year old girls. Mm -hmm. For the other population that is within the age uh, bracket that is targeted, we'll be able to access it but at a subsidized cost. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everyone wants to hear what is subsidized. <laughs> I may not be able to give the exact figures right now, mm -hmm. but I'm um, well aware that there are negotiations and there are partnerships going on, and it will be accessible to the other population at a fair price mm -hmm. compared to. In say, private facilities. Okay. Yes. What is the planned, you know, rollout stage? How exactly will it be happening? Which particular facilities will people be going to to be able to access this vaccine? So basically, it will be in the county uh, referral hospitals. Yeah. So it will be in the county referral hospitals and um, it will be incorporated in the KP immunization schedules, like I said. And uh, people will be able to access this vaccine through the major county referral hospitals. Then slowly we will disseminate through the other uh, level of uh, four, five, and uh, four, three, and two facilities. Mm -hmm. So with time, it will be accessible in most other facilities, but we'll begin in the major county facilities mm -hmm. for now. In all the 47 counties? Yes, in all the 47 counties. All right. Yes. Does it affect the fertility? Fertility issues. Um. So, like I said earlier, there's uh, no documented uh, serious adverse event, event that has been uh, 
uh, reported this far. Uh -huh. So the only side effects that have been reported from the vaccine are the minor side effects I mentioned earlier, pain at injection Dangerous site, in duration at the injection site, dizziness, uh, low grade fever, but to the extent of causing facility, uh, infertility, uh -huh. uh, that has not been documented. So I can say no, uh -huh. the vaccine is at now. Um, may not cause infertility. Maybe they are going studies to try and ascertain if that is true or not. Mm -hmm. But for now, that, has, that is not uh, documented. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you plan to, uh, you know, to talk with the community regarding this particular vaccine? Because we've seen what has happened previously sometimes when the government rolls out a vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, we've seen the churches coming out and saying, you, know, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. In terms of community involvement, to what extent are you also trying to empower the parents to, to these girls to actually bring their children for this particular vaccine? So like I said, a lot of... Uh, education and creation of awareness is called for. Mm. We need to assure the parents that uh, this vaccine is safe. It is actually to the benefit of their children. Mm. The side effects are there, but they are minor and they resolve mm -hmm. with, uh, within a short time. No major serious adverse events have been reported. So we need to spread word and inform people that the vaccine is important. And uh, looking at the figures, this is the second leading um, cancer in Kenya in terms of both morbidity and mortality. Mm -hmm. So we are talking at a major, we are looking at a major breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Okay. In developing uh, and other developed countries, the vaccine was introduced years back and that's why the rates of cervical cancer in the developed worlds are low. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if you are looking to get to that level, then I think it's good that we also embrace this idea because definitely it's uh, for the good. Of, 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 of the, all of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are you looking at in terms of the success rate? If you roll this out, mm -hmm. uh, what are we saying like in the next five years we'll no longer be talking about nine people dying daily or in your predictions, what, what do you think will be the success? Yes, today? definitely. Mm -hmm. Because in, in, if you're looking like the, the example I gave in the developed world, mm -hmm. cervical cancer is not an issue. Okay, cervical mm -hmm. cancer, it's an issue in sub-Saharan Africa because this is where we have not really fully embraced that idea. So, so, so in the near future, yes, we could, cervical cancer would not be one of the leading cancers of, among women mm -hmm. because right now it's number two after breast cancer. Yes. So if we embrace this idea and everyone comes out and gets the vaccines and practices safe sex, okay, yeah. then I think in the next five years, cervical cancer may be a with something we're not talking yes, about. Yeah. All right, our mm. time is up, but I'll quickly give you a minute to look straight into the camera mm. and just try and let people know that we shouldn't be dying uh, because of cervical cancer, yes. if indeed there is a vaccine. Yes. Yeah. So cervical cancer um, is one of the most preventable cancers. Actually, out of all the cancers, it is one of the most preventable cancers for these reasons. One, uh, there is a vaccine that can prevent against the disease. Number two, it has a very long pre-invasive state. I mean, from the time you get infected with the HPV virus to the time you get uh, invasive cervical cancer, it actually takes a very long period of time, up to 20 years. So that period of time gives us a chance to actually identify uh, this disease when it's early, before mm -hmm. it becomes cancerous, or what we call before uh, uh, the precancerous uh, stage, and actually uh, treat it, mm -hmm. okay? So one reason why it's a preventable cancer is because it's a HPV vaccine. Number two, it has a long pre-invasive pre state. Number three, the very effective screening methods that are available. We're talking about the pap smears, we're talking about HPV DNA, we're talking mm -hmm. about VIVLI. Then number four, there are effective treatment approaches that are available. So yeah. in case we screen you and we get a precancerous or a suspicious lesion, then there are treatment interventions that can be instituted so that you are treated and that disease does not progress to invasive cancer. So for these reasons, I encourage people to go get the vaccine. Yes. And uh, yeah. Mm. Let's prevent. We don't Let's even need prevent. to start talking about treatment. Exactly. <laughs> Let's right. prevent cervical cancer because within that period, that 15 to 20 years, mm -hmm. that is where we focus our screening on. Yes. Because we are aiming to identify uh, the precancerous lesion. From the time you get infected with HPV, mm -hmm. the cervical cells begin to undergo some changes. Then with time and the persistence of the HPV infection, yes. then the disease progresses to cancer. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we are screening, we are aiming to identify that precancerous lesion within these 15 to 20 years before it progresses to, to, cancer. to cancer. So it is one of the most... So it's possible to treat it within that window? Within that window, yes. Okay. So let's get the vaccine, let's get screened, let's eradicate cervical cancer in women.
All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Sivili Smithy. Okay. We have to wrap it up here, but we appreciate you finding time to come here and shed light on this very important exercise that you're currently conducting. Thank you. Well, we've been talking to Dr. Sivili Smithy, who is a clinical oncologist. The take-home message is we don't need to die as a result of cervical cancer. There is now a vaccine. If you have a 10-year-old daughter, then it is time to take them for a vaccine. When are you launching the campaign once again? This month, this October. Month. Mm. All right. So be sure to take advantage of that and get uh, this uh, vaccine, given that it is free. This is where we put a cap on your health tonight. But of course, Betty Kip Tum is up next with the business news.